Hi everyone, welcome to Insights with Lily Zhao. Last time I, I was talking about、um, we are not going back to normal after the coronavirus pandemic.、Um, many、um, friends just、uh, agree with me, and they have another question. So, what is what are we facing? Well, this time I'm going to talk about the. Post-pandemic world we are facing, I use three words, three D words: depression, deflation, and destruction. That's what I'm going to talk about. The new world we're going to be facing. For those who don't know me, my name is Lily Zhang, and I'm an international entrepreneur, author, and a speaker.、Uh, my program is try to make you have a healthier, wealthier, and、uh, Happier life. So I try my best in this、uh, difficult time. Yes, last time I already talked about.、Um, I think everybody feels the same. We are not back to normal. Also,、uh, you know, the old norm is not quite right, and currently the pandemic、uh, caused abnormality. Was caused by many norm- normalities of the old. So we are in a new world, new era. But the picture is not that、um, bright. That's why I'm using three D words. The first one is、uh, depression. I already talked about the Great Depression before, and this time.、Uh, Many economists and、uh, internationally agree、uh, with me, and quite a lot of international data we've got. The recent data just、uh, proved yes, we are in the depression.、Um, maybe matching the Great Depression in 1930s, because the latest、um, un- unemployment rate we've seen in United States. Uh, there are 20 million people unemployed, and the、uh, unemployment rate, unemployment rate, is reaching 15 percent. And there are 36 million people have already applied for the、um, unemployment benefit. In Germany,、uh, the picture is not that、uh, it's slightly better because the、uh, first. Quarter,、uh, Germany's GDP、uh, contracted 2.2 percent. Compared with France and Italy, it's slightly better because France、um, was 5.8 percent and Italy was 4.7 percent. But、um, first, GD- first quarter that was、uh, ended in March, so it's pretty much pre-pandemic. Because、uh, second quarter. Um, all the forecasting for second quarter is worse because it's post-pandemic.、Um, for Germany, the forecast for second、uh, quarter GDP is going to contract six point five percent or even ten percent.、Um, for France, Italy, Spain, they've been hit the most in Europe by the pandemic. The number probably even worse, probably ten to fifteen percent. And、uh, for United States, the、um, forecasting unemployment might reach thirty percent in second quarter. So、uh, also, this is not just the、uh, United States and Europe; it's worldwide. For、um, China, they already、um, demolished their GDP target because、uh, China's GDP target has been. Set for at six percent for last ten years. That's the annual target. Now this year they've announced because they, for the first quarter the the Chinese GDP was、um, minus negative six point five percent. So and Japan and、uh, they suffer a lot because they spend a lot of money prepare for the Tokyo Olympic and now it's unlikely it's going to happen. And Japan, they had、uh, 20 years of lost、uh, lost two decades, so their growth was was really stagnant. But、um, they probably just started recovering, but now it's the 
pandemic. So Japanese economy is going to shrink, um, forecasting five percent. So globally, um, the forecasting for global GDP is going to by international monetary um, IMF is going to shrink about around five percent globally. So this. Um, Depression is going to be worldwide. It's not one region. We I I talk about Latin America. They probably much worse because uh, uh, they are probably the pandemic about um, two or three weeks behind America. So in Brazil, they already the infection rate is already reaching number three in the world, and in Peru. The number is very bad. So for Latin America and uh, other developing countries, the suffering will be much worse than developed countries because simply because uh, for developed countries they have the government uh, subsidies. Like in in Germany, there are ten million、um, people already on government subsidy. Otherwise, the in, the unemployment rate. Will be much much higher, and the、uh, United States,、uh, of course, we all know all government、um, have their、uh, package and just support the economy.、Um, they estimated、uh, aid package is going to be reaching nine trillion at the end of this year in United States, which equals to about one million. Every second, one million U.S. dollars every second injected into U.S. economy. That's very shocking. Basically, where the money come from? It's the government printing money, and of course,、uh, as uh, uh, United States and European Central Banks, they they. I think at the at the moment for short term this is necessary just to support、um, average business and、uh, support people so they keep their、uh, employees and business、uh, float. But how long can they support be?、Um, as we know, I don't have.、Um, A good expectation on、uh, vaccine because the coronavirus so far, uh, uh, we our science, our medical field, we haven't developed a very good vaccine for the corona family. It's、uh, just like flu. So this pandemic is not going to be ended in short time. Although we see. Um, many countries open up. United States, Europe, Australia, New Zealand all gradually open up, open up the、uh, lockdown. But it doesn't mean、uh, we have cured the disease or we have control the disease. We basically just flatten the curve, just to save. If we don't open up, every country will be bankrupted, and、uh, the economy is dead. So we see we've been、um, open up the lockdown, but、um, we haven't developed a valid vaccine yet. And、uh, even if one vaccine has developed, this、uh, virus might come back. It's I think the best way is for us to live with.、Uh, This virus and almost like a flu, seasonal flu, and、uh, hopefully many, probably sixty to seventy percent of people developed immunity. We call that herd immunity, and this disease might get under control. But、uh, to have hope on this pandemic finish ended、um, very soon. That's not realistic. So basically, we have to live with this pandemic. We have to keep the current measures every country implied, like the、um, human distance,、uh, social distancing. In Germany, they did、uh, well because basically just ask everyone to wear a mask,、um, and、uh, almost overnight, since、um, the masks. The facial masks being supplied、um, everywhere, so that's a good sign. Also, some、um, experts are talking about、uh, a big scale testing. So that's probably another way going forward.、Um, some、uh, people talking about developing a device 
wearing a bracelet or some kind of electronic ID passport showing you've done the test and or you might have antibodies for that but um, many people are against that because it's just uh, you probably lost your privacy but to choose between privacy or health or economic growth we might have to choose we might have to compromise some of our freedom but which way we're going currently we don't know but one thing is certain the current measures most of the current measures like social distancing testing um, and uh, quite or not still avoid a crowded place is going to be in place for quite a while that means many business will be still suffering we might see lots of business closed down and uh, we probably will see many business not reopening again yeah i've already uh, got information say in, in new york many luxury restaurants closed down for for good and how long are we going to see air traveling airlines recovering and the tourism recovering we don't know yeah I, i've seen the this is the chart showing how badly industry is being influenced being affected we can see the hospitality hospitality and the nature industry being affected quite a lot and the retail uh, industry is going to, many shops will close so that's uh, I'm certain uh, we are in the Great Depression and it's going to last for some quite while I don't know if it's going to be 10 years like 1920s but um, it's not going to be short time maybe next year many experts uh, expect uh, in 2021 we might see a recovery i'm not that confident because um pandemic is one thing just like my analysis before this pandemic is just like a little burst of bubble we have many fundamental underneath issues and crisis that's been running on for many years like the debt problem the overspending of um, consumerism and also that's why the second word is uh, i'm going to talk about uh, deflation yes according to historical uh, worries especially for germans they still probably remember in 1920s the, the weimar republic uh, they because the government printed so much money they facing hyperinflation that's why some people worry about uh, hyperinflation because currently every government every country they've been printing money like crazy so like i already said one million us dollars in the united states pumping to the economy every second but where the money from they just printing money so this uh, these um, printing money and uh, another word quantitative easing going to cause hyperinflation that's a question many people worry about according to historical data but back to 1920s we we know uh, now that uh, Weimar Republic the hyperinflation was not really caused by printing money was caused by political crisis because the Weimar Republic the government didn't have the legitimacy to borrow money from overseas also to raise tax this time it's different because um, every government although they print a lot of money especially in US, in US dollars and uh, but they they sell their government debt overseas well, for example like uh, most of US government bonds was um, bought by Chinese government yeah so they although Donald Trump has been talking about um, the trade wars and the uh, two economies actually they both like brothers you know just Chinese owns most of United States government bonds also of course we all know all those uh, government bond government debt government bonds needs to be that's government debts at the moment most countries are reaching 150 percent of their government debt only one government like germany only 60 percent that's probably the most healthy um, 
relatively most healthy uh, economy in the world at the moment. That's Germany. Yeah. So um, this time we don't see we, we don't see the um, hyperinflation like uh, uh, 1920s Germany. We probably most likely many experts worry about we will see deflation. That's probably more dangerous because uh, since 2000. Since 2000 and 2008, we know the great financial crisis, uh, the quantitative easing that's been happening all the way, and now it's uh, the United States has already passed fourth round of quantitative easing. Um, there are nearly nine trillion U.S. dollars being uh, injected into the market, into the economy, but every country seems to face the deflation risks rather than inflation. Why? Because for the last um, 10 years, most of the money or the quantitative easing we, we know hasn't been go to the main street, hasn't been go to the employees, employees small and medium business. Most of the or ninety nine percent of the money printed or quantitative easing was injected into the financial market. So we that's why uh, the government we saw government pay out big banks, big uh, hedge funds, and big financial institutions. And uh, we see stock although average people's uh, wages not going up, even going down, and we don't see consumer price going up very much because um, the extra money, more and more money going into financial market. We see stock market going up. We see uh, stock price going sky high. And also going to hedge funds, venture capitals, and those funds going to Silicon Valley. That's why we see lots of assets bubble, and all we see all the uh, most class of assets like uh, stock and shares, uh, real estate, and the virtual capital hedge funds returns going very high, and uh, that's why we see. Um, this create a big assets bubble for the last um, 10 years and uh, takes about 10 years for those more than 10 years for those uh, wealth to distribute part of their wealth to average people. That's why but we see the gap between rich and poor is um, enlarging a lot. We see the middle class, they, they probably have uh, some kind of um, assets like their house, but they are really under very high debt. But wage increase is minimal. But we see many rich people getting rich, especially in Wall Street and uh, those Chinese. Uh, well, we now we know because the uh, Chinese government they input lots of money into Wall Street. Wall Street and Chinese government or other countries it is, they probably getting richer in the last um, 10 years. Basically, the 1% of the world's the richest people, they're getting wealthier, but uh, most of middle class, they probably keep the same, and uh, the gap between rich and poor is enlarging all over the world, every country, developed and uh, developing countries. So this time, we will not um, after 10 years of this asset bubble, I think this pandemic basically just is a little, just burst the bubbles. And this pandemic, of course, we suffer uh, because of the economic lockdown, we suffer, every country suffer a lot from this pandemic. But the underlying fundamental problem still keep the same. We still have very, very high debt. And uh, we still got the, the small and medium business and average people, they still don't have enough capital to grow. So people, and this time is worse. 
um, because of this pandemic, also economic lockdown, many people lost their jobs. Many people lost small business lack of um, confidence to grow their business. That's why we see a downward spiral of the whole uh, deflation. Deflation means everything going down, investment going down. People don't invest small to uh, medium business they can't invest more and consuming uh, going down consumer price going down people because of people are feared losing their jobs people have less money in their pocket that's why they're spending less they only buy food some drinks and pay their mortgages the minimum so we see retail sector suffer a lot business can't get enough sales of course we see the uh, the biggest drop of oil price in May it's um, the future of um, US crude oil drop to minus 36 dollars per barrel which is historically unseen before so we've seen because I think fundamentally because that's uh, the demand for oil drop dramatically so basically deflation means everything going down the price going down the demand going down, the investment going down, consuming going down, trade going down, all business going down, business shutting down, and people's wages, income going down. And because of all of these going down, people's confidence going down. They not um, business can't expand. It's which is caused the the downward spiral every factor influence another factor so the keep going down so which is basically the nightmare of the world that means no matter how much money how much subsidies even you print you inject like one million us dollars into the economy every second nine trillion dollars inject into the economy you can't restart the economy because people are not spending business are not growing investment are not going into real business so that's the current i think it's already happening we probably already seen many people lost their jobs business going down and uh, people even business reopened we don't see people spending money there we see empty restaurants cafes empty retail shops so that's a downward spiral that's the current post pandemic situation we are in so that's what difficulties all of us going to face and that's what difficulties all the government going to face so how can we move forward how can we drag us out of this black hole now i'm going to talk about the last but not least d destruction i'm talking about destruction yes i think that's the universal law destruction and creation that's the cycle of life and cycle of business cycle of all crises so we need a destruction to create something new the old system the old normality already can't go any further we the the, the tools federal central banks can use already to the end the Keynesian theory doesn't work anymore we've been printing money forever we've been um, sink into debts forever and now no matter how much money inject into the economy how much debt we have it's not going to start restart the, the business or confidence we have well historically uh, the destruction comes with world war yeah we've seen uh, uh, basically world war ii ended the great depression it's created jobs and created new innovations and uh, business of course many people lost their lives and at the moment we've seen uh, the uh, when i talk about war 
yes, I, I probably people remember I talked about World War Three before. I'm not rule out that possibility, but the war already started. It's not uh, just uh, um, guns and tanks. The war, we are in a biological war, and we've already seen the information war between China and America, between left and right, between Muslims and the Israelis. So that's an information war, and who's right, who's wrong, and uh, what are the conspiracies behind that? People actually we are at a crossroad, and also we've seen technology war between U.S. and uh, China. Yeah, they about the five G, about Huawei. Basically, U.S. going to stop the from the sources stop. Huawei develop its 5G network. I think that's a good move, and uh, because um, Chinese government is going to use this technology war to basically destroy the Western system, and uh, that's uh, the United States move is uh, smart. Otherwise, like Europe, in UK, France, and Germany, they still struggling to to decide which side they're going to be and if they still use um, uh, Huawei's 5G network infrastructure yeah so I and also we've, we've seen the uh, United States they started their space force now I think that's a good good move and they're starting those technology basically they're going to um, occupy the higher ground of um, future space technology, also the information technology. So the war is ongoing. In China, they they pan out their digital currency and basically just improve the the monitoring system of their citizens. And we've seen political wars between. United States and the China, you know that's a two system, and also the conflict um, concentrate on Taiwan and Hong Kong. Yeah, that's uh, some hotspot there. Um, Taiwan is getting uh, United States. They are going to redraw quite a lot their uh, support chain from supply chain from China. Uh, they force lots of high tech. Uh, U.S. companies, also including European and Taiwanese high-tech companies, back to United States. I think that's a good move, and that's the political and the economic war. Are we going to see a nuclear war? I think at this stage, nobody wish to see that. Even United States and China, they've been fighting um, verbally, economically, technologically. And even uh, in a cyber competition, it's uh, it's almost like two enemies to each other. Yeah, they already are kind of heading that way. But I think everybody is trying to avoid a hot war. That means because in modern era, it's not going to the third World War Three, the hot war World War Three. It's not going to be tanks and planes. It's going to be nuclear war. So. There could be the end of the the world. Nobody can escape. So uh, we've seen wars in many field, many front, but we're probably not going to see a nuclear war. I hope. I seriously hope because there could be the end of human civilization. So I think um, everybody is trying to avoid that, although they show a lot of military muscles in South China Sea, in North Korea. Uh, they've done lots of uh, military drills, but still, I think the leaders of both countries, although the, the struggling, the fighting intense, intensified, but the real war is, I, I don't think anybody wish to see that. So. That destruction, I've talked about um, destruction of war. 
The thing we really need the real distraction to create something, we need my personal opinion, I think, is innovation, the real technology innovation. Here for the last uh, two decades, we've seen uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and all those social network, and Facebook um, worth billions of dollars. But are they real innovation? Do we really see progressing of human society? Well, I don't agree because uh, Facebook just makes everybody spend more time um, talking nonsense on to millions of your Facebook uh, friends but doesn't really create much value and all those platforms basically they just platform to use technology but it's not technology really changing human life and changing society we progress into a new era like, like I think our technology probably the, the progress in technology probably stopped after 1960s we create of course I, I actually I quite like companies like Google Apple's they do change human lives but I mean the revolutionary progress in technology we I think we still lack of that the technology can really save us out of this um, dead-loaded consuming economy I think we probably need that kind of destruction to destroy the whole the corrupted and greedy capitalism the old system yeah currently the modern uh, capitalism is quite similar to 19th century's gilded age at that time the railway road building construction was the new technology of course it's created big massive migration massive society change and also uh, stop uh, will basically distract the old um, corrupted and greedy capitalism system and this time I think we need a new destruction, new technology or some kind of innovation to destruct our old, we call that normality, our old system. I think our old system is very similar to, to the 19th century Gilded Age system. It's driven by greed and uh, corruption. Yeah, the greed from just making profit we saw the globalization it's not just it's not really globalization it's just maximum profit yeah it's just go to any cheap labor it doesn't matter if it's uh, fair trade or even child labor they just go to get the cheapest labor and uh, try to achieve the biggest profit and all the big corporations they they are profit driven they are not going to change in society or progress technologically one country is did slightly better that could be Germany because Germany is the only country achieved um, they, they, they keep their society and keep their they're not most of the corporation or companies not driven by just profit they really focus on they keep the high-end manufacturing also they keep the high higher wages they're not going to just um, China or just to get cheap labor produce um, cheap products German manufacturing goods are high quality high end high price and that's how they set the standard and very high standard for developed countries and German economy has been running at very low debt this time the because the pandemic the German government reached only 60% of their debt so almost the, the lowest among Western countries and Germany did very well in this pandemic because uh, for Germans uh, Germany's uh, location is in the center of Europe and it's been infected this disease very early almost same time as Italy the infection rate is very high but Germany keep the because of Germans uh, high-end 
manufacturing they can keep the ventilators uh, going ICU units going and uh, that's why they control this pandemic re relatively much better than other their death rate is only four percent while other European countries uh, is around ten percent so I think German economy will recover much faster than other Western countries but German politicians they probably have the short-sighted vision they not uh, seeing German economy is based on Germans hard working and uh, innovation they they kind of promoted climate change and electric cars they follow electric cars as follow other like Tesla or oh, they, they didn't dig out the German the real German spirit or innovation spirit so basically my opinion is the German politicians they didn't match the German people and German economy but relatively German economy probably recover better than other Western developed countries just because the structure and uh, Germans his uh, manufacturing sector has been well structured also German Germany's um, service sector and also the finance sector is not so well developed like the United States they have the real manufacturing base so I wish uh, if Germany's uh, politicians uh, if their brain power can match um, German people's innovative and hard-working power spirits the German economy will be much better I've been talking about the three D's depression deflation and destruction for the post pandemic era we are in a new era new world it's not going to uh, be easy it's going to be painful and quite brutal everyone probably will suffering and you might see your debt level going up and your income decreasing so for most of my friends and the most people the first thing is survive this pandemic and then survive this economic downturn or depression and um, try best to to meet your obligations like paying your mortgages and paying your bill and then waiting well maybe not just waiting maybe everyone can create something i think i hope a new structure will be created out of this crisis and i hope we are going to have a better world after all those pains thank you very much for watching my program if you like please uh, refer like or comment on my channel and also subscribe thank you very much i see you next time